Iron removers, tar removers, clay bars, what are they? How do you use them? And are they even necessary? Well, let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage Motorcycle Detailing Series. In this series, I'm covering the four steps that I take to get and keep my motorcycle looking its very best. Now, those four steps involve properly washing the motorcycle, decontamination using a clay bar, and in some cases, chemicals to further remove contaminants from your motorcycle surfaces. And that's what we're going to focus on in today's video. The third step is paint polishing and correction. And then four, finally, applying some form of paint protection. Now, paint protection can come in the form of a wax or a sealant or a ceramic or graphene coating. And I'll be doing a video that covers various forms of paint protection and what the pros and cons are of each one. If you have not already watched my video on washing your motorcycle using the two-bucket method, I'm going to put links in the description of this video to that video, and I'll put it up above. So make sure you check that out. I'll also include links to any products that I use in the making of this video, where you can order them from Amazon or wherever you buy your products. Which leads me to the topic of sponsorship. None of the companies or products used in this video have paid anything for me to mention their products. I purchased every product used in this video, and none of the companies or products have ever been sponsors on this channel. That said, this video and videos like this would simply not be possible without the support of Honda Goldwing owners who have purchased my Honda Goldwing maintenance video series. Now, I have maintenance videos for the fifth and sixth generation Goldwing models and all that information is available on my website. Of course, I'll put links to those videos in the description of this video. As I've said before, I am not an automotive detailing professional. I'm just a hobbyist who has a passion for detailing. I like keeping my cars and motorcycles looking their best, and I've adopted the products, methods, and techniques of some reputable auto detailing professionals. Now, if this is a subject that you're interested in and you want additional in-depth information, more than I can give you here, I can recommend that you check out Pan the Organizer YouTube channel, where he has hundreds of auto detailing videos on any topic you could ever want to know about. I will put links in the description of this video to his channel. And there are several other good channels out there on this topic. It's a pretty popular topic. So let's talk a little bit about decontamination. What is it? Is it necessary? Generally, there are two methods of decontamination. And one way is by using chemicals such as iron removers and tar removers. The other process is a mechanical method using a clay bar or clay mitt to remove any contamination from your painted surfaces. Now, in this video, I'm going to be focusing on painted surfaces. When it comes to your wheels and tires, they kind of have their own special needs, which I cover in my wheel and tire cleaning video. Now, this is the same thing is true for your polycarbonate windshield and clear dash lens or your gauge lenses. At this point, I should also emphasize that when it comes to using a clay bar as well as paint polishing, I'm referring to motorcycles that have a glossy clear coat. If your motorcycle has one of these modern matte finishes, I'm not exactly sure if these same methods will work. I'll be working on my own 2018 Honda Goldwing, which has a pearl white metallic paint. But these techniques will work on any motorcycle brand, or any vehicle for that matter, with a gloss clear coat paint job. 
Since our ultimate goal in this series is to apply paint protection, we first need to make sure that the paint is corrected with no scratches or swirls. But before we can do that, we need to make sure the paint is free from contamination. Your motorcycle's clear coat, which is the top layer on your paint, is porous and it's not perfectly flat. If you could see a cutaway of your paint, you would see that there, uh, the clear coat has these hills and valleys, and contaminants can accumulate and become embedded in those valleys in the clear coat. And these contaminants can consist of you know, industrial fallout or brake dust, rail dust, road grime, tar, tree sap, bird droppings, bug guts, a chemical or paint overspray. In fact, I remember a few years ago, a friend of mine had his Toyota Camry parked in my driveway while one of my neighbors was spraying something on their home or their yard. We still don't know exactly what it was, but it just covered his car and it was not easy to remove. If these contaminants are not removed, they're going to prevent any paint protection from bonding to the clear coat. And some forms of contamination like bird droppings or bug guts, are they're acidic, and they can actually etch through the clear coat and damage your paint. And besides, when contaminants exist on the paint, it just doesn't look as good as it should. It doesn't have that smooth, slick feel when you run your hand across it. And contaminants make your motorcycle or your car harder to wash and keep clean. Of course, to get that slick, smooth surface, you always start with the very first step, which is to wash the motorcycle. Then the second step is to move on to decontamination using a clay bar or clay mitt, and in some cases, chemicals. An iron remover can be applied to loosen ferrous particles embedded in the paint so that they can be washed away. However, I personally think that iron removers are probably best for automotive use where you have these large painted panels, such as hoods, doors, fenders, etc. I sprayed down my entire Goldwing with this Adams iron remover just to test the product, and I only found one small iron deposit present. When an iron remover comes into contact with these iron deposits on a painted surface, you're going to notice some red or purple streaks. And that's an indication that the chemicals are creating like a corrosive reaction within the particles. And after a few minutes, you can just rinse the surface and the iron deposits will rinse away. Now, as I said earlier, I sprayed my entire Goldwing painted surfaces and only found one. Now, there are two reasons I think that using these iron removers on motorcycle paint may be unnecessary. The first reason is, if there are any iron deposits, they're going to get removed using a clay bar. The second reason is, we're dealing with very small painted surfaces on a motorcycle compared to a car or truck. On a car or truck with large painted panels, it's a good idea to chemically remove the iron deposits before using a clay bar because that means there's going to be less contamination of the clay during the clay bar process. As with any form of contamination, when the clay bar picks up those iron deposits, they end up getting rubbed around the rest of the paint, which could scratch or mar the surface. So getting those large painted panels as clean as possible before using the clay bar is a good idea. It's the same reason we thoroughly wash the motorcycle before using a clay bar. I mean, you could use a clay bar on a dirty motorcycle, but you're just going to be picking up all that crap onto the clay bar and rubbing it onto the clear coat, causing potential damage. Large painted surfaces with a lot of iron deposits justifies the use of an iron remover prior to using the clay bar. But on a motorcycle with these small surface areas, it just probably overkill. However, if you do choose to use an iron remover, you would only need to do so maybe once or twice a year. And make sure you carefully read the instructions on the product before use.
Now, if you have road tar, bug guts, oily road film, or, you know, on your painted surfaces, you may want to use a spray tar remover before you use the clay bar. Tar removers are generally citrus-based products that are safe to use, and you simply spray them onto the tar or the road grime and allow them to dwell for a few minutes until they kind of melt away the tar or road film, which can then just be wiped away. The important thing to remember is just don't think that because a proper wash, even with a two-bucket method, is going to remove all the contamination on the paint. That's going to remove the surface contamination that you can see with the naked eye. But there are still likely going to be contaminants in that clear coat that must be removed mechanically using a clay bar or a clay mitt. Now you can do a simple plastic bag test to check for this contamination. After you've completed the wash and you've dried the motorcycle, Put your hand into a Ziploc bag and gently run your hand along the painted surface, like on your gas tank or your saddlebag lids. It is likely that it's going to have a little gritty feel like sandpaper texture, and that's an indication that the clear coat still has contamination. And that can only be removed using a clay bar. Typically, you would only need to use a clay bar maybe twice a year. But how often could depend a lot on some other factors, like is your bike kept in a garage? Do you keep the bike covered? Is there a lot of environmental fallout in your area? Do you ride your bike to work and leave it outdoors during the daytime? These things all come into effect. If you already have a ceramic coating or a graphene coating on your paint, you would not want to use a clay bar as it could damage that coating. However, if you have no paint protection, or you're just using a wax or a spray sealant, then using a clay bar will be necessary. So what is a clay bar? Well, basically, the clay bar is made up of resins that have a texture similar to a stiff putty, which is specifically formulated for use on automotive painted surfaces. Now, I've heard of some guys who use plumber's putty instead of a clay bar, but I don't recommend that. Plumber's putty is not designed for use on automotive paint. Clay bars are just not that expensive. I've got some examples here. So go ahead and spend the money and get the correct product for the job. The clay bar is engineered for use on automotive paint as a medium for removing surface decontamination. Because of the texture, the clay can be molded and formed to fit various contours of your motorcycle's painted surfaces. If you're using a clay bar on your car, you could even use it on the glass to remove grittiness or contamination in the glass. Now, you can use the same clay bar for a few times, perhaps four or five times, before it becomes so contaminated that it just needs to be discarded. As the clay bar becomes dirty, you can remold it to get a clean surface to continue to work with. However, it's very important that if you drop the clay bar on the ground, it should be discarded and not used. The last thing you want to do is have that clay bar pick up some crap from the floor and then transfer that to your paint where it could scratch or mar the painted surface. So if you drop it, just throw it away. Now clay products come in a variety of forms. I prefer the clay bar. But they also now offer some clay mitts and I think even a clay rag. But these are really better suited for cars or vehicles with a larger painted surface. I think the clay bars are better suited for use on a motorcycle with smaller surface area. Now clay bars are mildly abrasive, or at least they become so. And if you try to drag this clay along a painted surface, it's going to try to stick. So for that reason, you'll need to use a clay lubricant with it. These lubricants allow the clay to slide over the painted surface without sticking, yet still allow the clay to pick up the contaminants in the paint. Now, even though the clay itself may not be that abrasive, 
as you move it along the paint, you're picking up contaminants along the way. And as you continue to rub that clay back and forth on the paint, those contaminants can lightly mar the surface. So even though the paint may be decontaminated after using the clay bar, it's typically a good practice to follow the clay bar process with a polishing process, which we're going to cover in the next video in this series. Now, as for clay lubricants, in the past, I've always used Speed Shine from Griot's Garage. And I've always found that Speed Shine to be an exceptional, and I've never found it a reason to switch from it until now. Speed Shine is also a quick detailer, so you can use it on its own by simply spraying it on and wiping it off with a microfiber cloth. You get kind of a quick shine. Speed Shine does have paint protection properties that are left behind in the process to give your paint some extra gloss and a slick feel. If you have no paint protection, or you're simply going to be using a wax or a spray sealant at the end of your detailing process, Speed Shine is a great choice as a clay bar lubricant. However, since I'm using the clay bar today in preparation for applying a ceramic coating, I'm going to be using clay luber from the chemical guys. The reason is because clay luber has no added protectants such as waxes or sealants. It's simply a lubricant. And when applying ceramic or graphene coatings, we don't want any existing paint protection on the surface that could interfere with the bonding of the coating to the clear coat. The bottom line is, if you're using a clay bar as part of the process leading up to polishing and applying a ceramic or graphene coating, use a clay lube with no protectants. If you're using a clay bar as part of a process leading up to using a spray sealant or a wax or no protection at all, then using a quick de detailer like Speed Shine is fine. You may wonder how using a clay bar affects your existing paint protections such as a wax or a spray sealant. Does using a clay bar remove those products? Well, the answer is yes and no. The primary function of the clay bar is to remove contaminants, but in that process, it could cause some marring of the surface, which can only be corrected by polishing. Therefore, it's always a good practice to plan to reapply any waxes or sealants after using a clay bar. And as we mentioned previously, if your motorcycle has a ceramic or graphene coating, you should not use a clay bar as it could damage the coating. And if you paid someone to put on that coating, you know it's expensive. So after claying the surface, you'll move on to the next step, which will depend upon your paint protection goals. If you're planning to use a wax or a spray sealant, you can move directly to that step. However, if you have planned to apply a semi-permanent coating, like a ceramic coating or a graphene coating, it is crucial that you polish the surface using a machine polisher before applying the coating. If you want to remove 100% of any prior protection to the paint, the only way to ensure that you can do that is with machine polishing. This is a crucial step because ceramic or graphene coatings need to bond directly to clean virgin clear coat so that they can bond better, be more effective, and last longer. We're going to cover machine polishing in the next video, which is the third step in my process of the detailing series. The machine polishing step will use special polishes and pads to remove any marring left from the clay bar process as well as any scratches or swirls that might be in the paint. The polishing process also helps to level out the clear coat to a flatter surface. And basically, what we want to do is get the paint as good as we can before applying a graphene or ceramic coating, because if we don't, those coatings are simply going to be sealing in those imperfections in the paint. We want the paint to look as good as possible, feel as good as possible, 
and of course, last as long as possible. Even if you don't plan to use a ceramic coating, maybe you're going to apply a wax or a spray sealant, you're still going to get better results by going through the steps of washing, decontamination, and polishing. I have a couple of different clay bar products here to show you. First is actually a clay bar that comes with the Chemical Guys chemical uh, Luber, this clay luber spray lubricant. This is their OG clay bar, which they claim is a light to medium duty clay. And that's what I'm going to be using on my Goldwing today. Now, there are different clay bar products that are light duty, some medium duty, and others are even heavy duty, which are used to remove extreme contamination. A heavy duty clay bar is very aggressive and it's more likely to cause paint marring during the clay bar process. And this would be if you have like a really old vehicle with its extreme contamination, maybe an oil field truck. A heavy duty clay might be necessary for that, but for most motorcycles, a light to medium duty clay should be fine. Here's another highly rated clay bar product from New Ring. Uh, it's available on Amazon for about I don't know, $17 for four bars. This other one from Matt C. Uh, this is the one I used uh, in my Griot's Speed Shine clay bar video. I think you can get six bars of this for around $20. Now, all of these are light to medium duty clay products. Many of these products come with a plastic storage container where you can store the clay bar after it's been used. Now, I would recommend, however, that you spray the clay bar liberally with the clay lube before placing it into the plastic container so it won't stick to the plastic. These, these clay bars are pretty sticky. And you could also store them in a Ziploc bag. As I said earlier, you can use the same clay bar four, five, or even six times before it could be discarded or should be discarded. Oh, and also, don't allow these uh, clay bars to freeze, as it could damage the clay. So to use the clay bar, you may only need about half the bar for a motorcycle, so you can tear it in half, and then use your hands to mold a piece of it to a flatter consistency. It's also a good idea to wear gloves when you do this. Spray the surface liberally with the clay lube of your choice and lightly rub the clay back and forth over the paint. If you feel it beginning to stick, just spray more lube and keep it slippery. You can use the clay bar and lube on your painted surface, your rear view mirrors, plastic parts. However, I would not advise using the clay bar on your polycarbonate windshields or your clear dash lens as they are super sensitive to marring or scratching and cannot be easily polished without damaging them. If you plan to use a clay bar on your wheels, I would certainly use a dedicated piece of clay for use on wheels and keep it separate. Don't use that same piece of clay on your paint. Personally, I don't use a clay bar on my wheels, but if you feel it necessary, it's up to you. It shouldn't harm anything. You also want to keep a clean, soft microfiber cloth handy as you finish with a section. Use that cloth to remove any residual clay lubricant as you go. After using the clay bar on a section, such as a saddlebag lid, run that Ziploc test again, and you should notice quite a difference in how smooth the surface is after that contamination has been removed by the clay. Also, Frequently check the clay for visible signs of contamination. Then fold the clay over and remold it to create a new clean, flat surface to use. Once you've gone over the entire motorcycle, you're done. So let's summarize. Number one, only use a clay bar on a clean surface after the motorcycle has been thoroughly washed and dried. If your motorcycle already has a ceramic or a graphene coating, do not use a clay bar as it could damage the coating. If you're using a clay bar as part of a process to eventually apply a ceramic coating, use a dedicated clay lubricant like clay luber with no protectants. 
avoid using a quick detailer. Now, if you're not planning to apply a ceramic or graphene coating as your method of paint protection, then using a quick detailer as a clay lube is fine. Number five, if you drop your clay bar on the ground, discard it immediately and get a fresh piece of clay. Frequently check the clay bar for contamination and remold as necessary during the process. Store your clay bar in the plastic airtight container or Ziploc bag after spraying it with some clay lube. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button under the video. That really helps out with our YouTube rankings. And if you want to further support this channel and encourage more videos like this one in the future, check out the new Super Thanks button under the video. I look forward to seeing you on the next Cruise Man's Motorcycle Detailing video.